guys, this is Kyle and Emily, and we are bringing to you part three of the Dip series. Today we're going to be channeling some Patrick Swayze from Dirty Dancing and doing what we like to call the Around the World Dip. It's not like the creepy Patrick Swayze from Ghost, so I'm not going to be creeping up behind Emily like while she's spinning pottery or anything, so don't worry. Yes, <laughs> you are welcome, not yet. That's part four. We are going to get in this position, and I'm going to take Emily down and bring her around and bring her back up, okay? So that's it. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. You saw the proximity we were, okay? This kind of distance can be gained in any dance. It just has to be properly set up. You don't want to be like out here, just turning, having a good time, and then leave at your partner. That can be slightly scary. Wow. We use bachata for an example, okay? So if we're in a bachata basic, if we've got a one, two, three, five, six, seven, I'm gonna wait till the lady's right foot is free. And instead of just taking her into a normal step size, she's gonna feel me exceed that step size a little bit. Now, what's very important is placement. So if you can notice, as we're here, we are spaced where Emily's right foot is between my two feet. This is very, very important because if we're flat to one another, our knees are gonna hit each other. We have to have a place for whenever I start to take her down and lower her into the actual dip, her hips can come forward and her knees can come under. And she's gonna to talk to the ladies a little bit about that in a second. If we're here, what we wanna do, if we're dancing that basic again, a one, two, three, five, six, seven. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and get this grip. If I pull her into me, she's gonna know something's up, okay? So she's already prepping. Gentlemen, we're going for a double underhook here. I'm not gonna be fully wrapped on her. I also don't wanna to be too low because she needs some support over the majority of the surface of her back. Now, what's gonna happen is I am going to shift onto my left foot. She's gonna shift onto her right. I'm then going to lower straight down. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm sending my tail end to the floor and keeping my back straight. Then I can bring her around and back up, positioning her on that back foot, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Let's talk a little bit about what the gentleman's position looks like. As he's going into this, he doesn't need the upper body to fall forward because her upper body is going back already. That's going to be um, too much weight in that direction and you guys are going to jingo all over the place. So what has to happen is he is going to sit down, okay? Trying to take the tail straight to the grass and he is going to come forward just a little bit in the arms. Okay? That's what's going to enable her to come around and pop back up. The arms cannot be loose, okay? We also can't have a loose grip on the lady. Has to be firm enough to where she knows she's safe, to where she can then do her job, which Emily's gonna talk to you about now. Mm -hmm. As the guy sets us up, we wanna make sure that we aren't resisting and pulling back in our hips. Okay, we do wanna make sure that we're just letting him set this up, and we wanna make sure that at the same time, we're not collapsing forward. Usually those are the two things that happen. We either pull back or we collapse forward. So I'm still gonna maintain my own space, but I'm gonna let him close the distance. We also wanna make sure that as he sets this up, that we do go up onto our toes. I find that gives me just a little bit more control. Actually, it lets me control my weight so that I'm not shifting backwards and away from him. We also wanna make sure that we're not hinging from our knees and going straight back this way. As Kyle mentioned, that kind of contributes to this Jenga effect that we have. So we are actually arching up with our upper body and controlling this. So if you have a guy who tries to do this and isn't giving you quite enough support, you shouldn't fall over. It will just take a lot of effort to do. So guys, if you're not confident in this one, don't do it. After that, we just really need to make sure that we let him lead the dip. We're gonna let him start the dip, and as we go into it, we wanna make sure that I'm sending my hips towards him. He's creating space and I'm giving him my hips. So then from here, it's his job to take me down and around. I'm not going to make this part happen. And then he has to bring me up and make sure that I'm on my leg. So guys, that is your responsibility. Ladies, don't take that on yourself because it's too much. Gentlemen, as Emily said, if you don't feel comfortable in doing this, like super confident, do not do it. Not to get all ominous, gentlemen, if you slip off the lady, she is going to fall. Okay, either on her back or on her head. And the injury to your ego could be more severe than that, okay? <laughs> How you're gonna practice this is little bit by little bit. Now, first and foremost, if the lady does not have the back flexibility, gentlemen, do not force it. Once again, you could hurt her. 
we're going to operate on this 45 degree angle to this 45 degree angle. It completes at that point. So it goes down, circles, and arises on the other side. Now, when we're first learning this, get the idea of the lady, as soon as the gentleman pitches, you need to get that feel of the knees working together, the partnership working together. What will happen is you'll practice little bit by little bit. Get this feel. Once you get that feel, take it halfway. Once you get comfortable, take it a little bit further. Once you get comfortable, take it down and around and up. Now, once again, that is the Around the World. This is Kyle and Emily with Dance Tonight Chattanooga.